The Holy Gospel according to St. John, 7th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Thirteen chapters later, Jesus and the disciples are once again gathered. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. While he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. I think sometimes we take worship for granted or don't spend enough time wondering about how the Holy Spirit works through it. The hymn of the day, which we just sang, Spirit of Gentleness, is a very special spiritual tune for me. It was both a song I heard at the spark of my conversion experience, as well as it was used for my ordination song. This is my ordination stall. The wonderful prelude we heard, wonderfully played, beautifully played, is uh, a Curcio favorite of mine. In fact, less than a month after my conversion, coming back to Christ, called to serve, or better said, begin the journey, that song, Pass It On, accented for me what the Holy Spirit was messaging me to hear. This was a message that I just couldn't close myself off from, graciously receiving. The Spirit said through both of those songs, I have a new plan for you. I would like to add to that, thanks be to God, alleluia, and amen. The story of Pentecost is an amazing one to wrap your mind around. The violent rush of the wind of the Spirit ascending as flames atop the heads of the disciples. Amazing and something perhaps we can't understand ever truly touching us. Well, that it would, might hurt, right? Well, this is most definitely not the truth, however. It may not be flames, but the soft voices of a processing choir fading off and tears rolling inexplicably down your face as an affirmation baptismally of God's message to your heart's ears alone. God was indeed speaking to me that early August Sunday morning back in 2003. Every time I shared this witness of the Holy Spirit, there's been nothing I could completely confirm as that ultimate spark of God's call to change my whole entire life. It just happened then and here I am now. Of all things as well, proving that God both has a sense of humor and timing. It was a hymn written by a UCC minister being played in a little Swedish Lutheran church on the north side of Chicago. The tune we heard uh, as this morning's prelude, I had to fish out of a Methodist hymnal. It's, uh, it pays to have uh, over 75 boxes of pastoral books and resources. I got about 28 different hymnals, and, and yeah, I found, I found the Pass It On in there. So interesting how the Holy Spirit shapes what you are called to proclaim, which is a huge aspect of not only discipleship, which is the journey of the Christian, but all the texts this morning talk about that unconditional welcome. Unconditional welcome and autonomy and development of the Holy Spirit's work in each and every one of us and our lives. Again, I say, thanks be to God. Unconditional welcome and autonomy were some of the themes from this past 
weekend's association conference, the Eastern Association here in town. There was also a wonderful blessing of being a part of someone's ordination. I have been very blessed to have been a part of two other ordinations outside of my own, where I was called forward to, with other clergy, to lay on hands upon the soon-to-be-ordained pastor. The laying on of hands is a very biblical rite. This is not only an affirmation of the spirit of the body, but it generates that same kind of fire that those disciples in today's lessons felt. This fire is from, in some form or another, in the heart, in our hearts, the heart for the gospel. We are called to proclaim it throughout our lives in some form or another. Welcome is a very important theme, not just connected to our polity, but truly biblically through the love, peace, and mercy only Christ can reveal through the Spirit's work. It can happen at any time, or better understood, in God's time, Kairos time. Kairos is a wonderful, uh, comforting understanding of God's infinite, boundless plans and purposes for our lives. Some of our Christian brothers and sisters understand this as aspects of grace or provenient grace. The Lutheran me will always see grace as grace, period. Or as my overused statement goes, grace is that all caps, extra bold, Hollywood size sign reality written upon the heart. For this particular ordinand, her journey began with those unpopular themes uh, from last week, being that she had to suffer ridicule, rejection, and persecution to get where she is now. For others, it could mean embarking into a completely different life at the beginning of their human journey, as an artist to have God start messing with bringing poetry into it, into their art, and eventually outright calling them in a little Swedish Lutheran church. Okay, you've got to start to listen to me now. A kinder and gentler world can exist if you truly come and follow me. Those tears were like the living waters in the first gospel text I shared. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Let me tell you, they certainly did flow. The peace of Christ released upon the disciples some 13 chapters later in the Gospel of John were those voices singing of God's abundant welcoming love, his welcoming love and invitation in that processional hymn, Spirit, Spirit of Gentleness. Passing it onward, the Gospel that is, is all about the Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit working as that new nature within your first church, the heart, as well as it is where the Holy Spirit takes you. In efforts to build our body here, it is my task to guide your spiritual formation, your faith formation. Like St. Paul working tirelessly to enliven and enlighten his wayward Corinthians, I am here to preach and teach and help shape your faith to realize that you indeed have the capacity to be and do all things through Christ who indeed strengthens us all. Pentecost isn't just supposed to be the birthday party of the church, but the celebration of the anointing, blessing, and commissioning of our spirited bodies to take a fantastic leap of faith into the future with the gospel of grace in our hearts and spread through our voices, hands, and feet as the body of Christ. Here is that very biblical, unconditional welcome. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we were all made to drink of one spirit. These words came out of the lips of a former Pharisee, a man who sat back in the early part of the book of Acts while the angered crowd stoned Stephen. What on earth happened to him? He had a conversion experience. 
We all remember the story. God knocked him plain off his horse and asked him why he was persecuting him. The scales that God placed upon Paul's eyes were like those tears shed that balm upon our heart to truly open his spiritual eyes to the truth of what he was really called to do and become. The only thing I heard at that conference that I couldn't agree with was that one of the presenters said that conversion is often mistaken as a call into ministry. Well, I'm here to greatly correct that. My conversion experience is what changed my whole entire life for the better period. Yes, witnessing again. That's a problem with preaching for Pentecost. Blame God. <laughs> the Gathering North would make every fifth Sunday of the month Witness Sunday. Let me tell you, it was amazing to see and hear how God was working through these people's lives. Here was something very biblical to practice as a church and fellowship. We would hear the wonderful witness from one of our congregants, and then we would talk about it after worship during our fellowship. Those services were wonderful. And maybe eventually someday we could do it here if anyone's brave enough to do it or feel encouraged. You know, let the Holy Spirit speak it. Speaking of witness, I have been blessed to read through uh, an, the amazing photo albums, history collections of our uh, very own Grace Schmiedel. They are incredible. Here is the autonomous witness of what this church family means to her and her family. It is not only a fabulous fantastic example of stewardship and the sharing of gifts. She truly shared the spirit of Christ in her thoughtful gift of these pictures and texts related, all of which are diligently being prepared for us to share with the world on our web page soon. Who are we? First and foremost, we are disciples of Jesus. Secondly, we are his children of grace and promise, carrying out his call to each and every one of us to share his gospel together here and throughout the world. You may see the world as just the east side of Vegas, but God is calling, always calling us to think beyond not only ourselves, but the little universes we've all created and are perhaps all way too often comfortable in. One of the ministers at the association meeting made the wonderful quip, not printed in the bulletin, of course. He said, comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. This is one of those very old layers uh, all preachers need to incorporate into their delivery to get the truth of the gospel out there. It was just very humorously spirited to hear him saying this at just the right time during this ordination service. At just the very right time, God's time, those organ pipes dropped out and the voices of the choir sounded like soft bells. At just the very right time, the cursistas were processing outside of the main dining room hall into a darkened, long, candlelit hallway where the loving sight and voices of families and friends were singing Pass It On, our prelude music. This was this is while we were all led into a lovely little sanctuary in the Villa Desiderata Retreat Center on Pistaki Bay in McHenry, Illinois, the early October of 2003. Again, there were no flames or winds swirling about in the room, but the Holy Spirit was most definitely and truly there, profoundly there. Can you feel that spirit? even a little bit from what was shared. If you even felt a mustard seed's worth, that's great. Welcome to the true meaning of Pentecost. Let us pray. Gracious God, it only takes a spark to get that spiritual fire going. It only takes our hearts and shaping from your Holy Spirit to be glowing with the fire of the gospel for all to witness. May these next 24 Sundays in the season of Pentecost Teach us and inspire us to unconditionally share, live the gospel through our unique lives story. In your most precious name we pray. Amen.